So in this video, I want to talk about the density of the ocean water. Now, there are two main factors that, uh, that will change the density of the water, the temperature and the salinity. So you see the, the two images that I already showed you in previous presentations about the temperature and salinity. And you see the surface salinity uh, has everything to do with <coughs> the temperature, actually. So the temperature actually affects the salinity, which then affects the density. But either way, temperature and salinity are the major factors, but salinity is highest in the tropical areas where more evaporation takes place. We talked about that. And then the temperature is also highest in those tropical areas where the um, the um, more sunlight is hitting it. However, water is going to be denser at colder temperatures because uh, the cold water um, tends to sink in relationship to hot water. It's, it's the whole convection cell that we talked about, the same thing that will happen in the atmosphere. And we do a demonstration in class with a fish tank and where you actually see that happening. And uh, I may even add a video on YouTube about this as well at a later time. But the, the currents are the deep water is usually colder because the cold water tends to sink and then the warm water tends to rise and so you, you create this 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 circulation in the ocean water but it, it's important that you understand that density is mostly based on temperature so that means that even though the equator is saltier much more saltier than the uh, tropical areas the, the polar areas are uh, because the poles are are much colder the water uh, the density is going to be higher there now that means both surf salinity and temperature contribute to density however temperature is is a greater factor than salinity is and so that means that the poles will have denser water than the tropics will and that's going to be important when we talk about currents on the next chapter so make sure you remember that and you can see here in the right side the density map that it mimics closely the temperature map, all right? But that you also see that there is a high, a little slightly higher density in the places like the Mediterranean Sea because of the high salinity. So that you see that the density also uh, also depends on salinity, but temperature wins in terms of, of how dense the, the, the water is going to be. It's the most important of the two factors. Another thing I want to talk about you guys in this video is the color of the water. Now, I'm sure that you've seen a cup before, and you, and you realize that this water is transparent. There's no color, right? And yet, when you look at a lake or a river or an ocean, it looks blue. What's going on here? Is water transparent or is water blue? Well, we, so let's, let's think about it. Uh, let's see. I think the water is blue, right? Look at here. This is the ocean, and I, all I see is blue water. And yes, I do see some different colors here, though. Look at that. Uh, look at that. Is it blue or is it more greenish? Is it blue or is it more greenish? Yeah. Look at that. That's green. So is the water blue, transparent, or is it greenish? Uh, is it both? Look at that. Blue, green. That's really confusing me. Is the water blue or is water green? What's the deal with the water? Is the ocean water blue, green? Is water transparent? Why are the water seems to have different colors. Now, when you look from the atmosphere, in a satellite image, it does look like the oceans are blue. But then again, if you look back and closer, you will see that there's a lot of aqua or even green in the oceans, not just blue. Or And then the water is transparent. So what's going on with the color of the water? Well, if you actually look at the satellite image of a device that was sent out, one of the satellites we talked about in the last chapter, that is actually designed to study the color of the water, you realize that water color changes depending on the ocean. And you actually see this picture as a representation of different tones of blue. So the, uh, the deeper blues are going to be the purples in this drawing. And the red, red, reds are going to be more uh, different, different colors of water. And so you see that the water color actually changes in the ocean. So what's going on? Why is the water color different? In different places well first of all water is transparent that's for sure but uh, because of things in the water it will look like it has a color in the oceans in fact uh, with when the with when you put a lot of water in all in one place and this water is absorbing gases from the atmosphere especially the most common gas in the atmosphere which is nitrogen 
Remember that we talked about this when we did, when we did the atmosphere. Nitrogen tends to absorb every color except for blue. And so since the water is rich in nitrogen, it will be blue. And so oceans are blue because of all the nitrogen dissolved in that vast amount of water. And so that's why the gases actually change the amount of water. So why would the water be more aqua or more green in some places? Well, if there's more life forms, algae, living in that water, the, the life forms will actually change the color of the water to greenish. And so areas of the world which are, have a lot of algae will have a greener looking water. Right? So there you go. That's your answer. Nitrogen gas causes the water to absorb uh, most of, of, the, of the light except for blue and that's why it has that color but it's if there's a lot of algae you're gonna have greenish water which actually means that you can use the algae as a measurement of the productivity of the oceans which is why you have the satellite which was sent out to measure the color of the water because the areas of the world which experience greater amount of, of algae will be an indication of the green pastures of the ocean. If you were a fish and you were trying to go to a place where there's going to be a lot of food, a lot of algae, a lot of people who eat algae, where would you go? You would go to where the water is tends to be greener or where the water or there's more algae, which because that indicates higher productivity. And you may notice that that's surrounding the continent, so really close to the continents, so you're going to have a lot of algae. Why? Because you have a lot of nutrients coming from the continents and the water is shallower. And so you're going to have more algae in those areas than you would have in other places. And also, in the poles, where the water is colder and it can hold more carbon dioxide, which allows for more photosynthesis and therefore more algae. And so you're going to have the, these areas of the world are the areas where the animals will go to eat. They go to the continents. They go to the, to the Arctic. They go to the cold areas of the world to actually get their water. Now, notice something interesting. Antarctica is supposed to be cold waters where the animals can actually go to get their productivity. However, you see very little uh, productivity in those areas, very little deep uh, uh, amount of algae in those areas. What's going on there? Well, with the ozone layer uh, depletion, uh, a lot of radiation is entering the, over the Antarctica Ocean, which is actually killing the animals uh, on, the, on those areas, so which is actually lowering the productivity of, the, of an area that's supposed to be high pro productivity. And also, this picture may have been taken during the winter on Antarctica, where the water is not going to be receiving too much sunlight, and therefore the productivity goes down. And so there's two reasons why it might look this way in this image. But either way, what you see here is that Areas close to the continents where the nutrients are more common or areas where the water is colder and there's going to be more carbon dioxide, you're going to have more algae, the water is going to be a little greener and therefore you're going to have uh, more productivity. And so the ocean color is important because it can tell us about the productivity of, the, of that area. All right? And I hope you understand this. And on the next topic, we're actually going to talk a little bit about life in the oceans.